house out here. This video is going to be a little bit different than some of the other ones that we've done. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I see people doing surf fishing and they're not in a boat and it's a lot less expensive way to get out there and do it. So I watched, you know, I binge watched all kinds of surf fishing videos and decided that, you know what, we're going to give it a try. Here's the first problem I encountered. I know where to go. Okay, I know where to go. But here's the problem that I have. <clears throat> so let's pretend that this is the shoreline right here, right? And here's Phyllis, and she's happily fishing like this, you know, hoping to catch a fish. And this is the water out here. Okay, when I go to cast my rod, and we've got, we bought a couple of ugly stick 12 foot rods. The farthest I can hope to get them is about 60 yards, right? I need to be at least 125 to 150 yards out or more. 200 yards would be better yet, right? I have two ways to get them there. So they're Phyllis cast there, but all the fishes are out here. And they're the fish that smile back. See, that, that's supposed to be a fish. Um, <laughs> But but they're actually kind of sad because the bait's nowhere near. It's over here because this is where Phyllis is fishing. I need to be out here. There's two ways to do this. Well, I mean, there's multiple ways. I could build a giant catapult or a trebuchet over here to throw it out there, but I'm not going to do that. I could use my drone. Here's what I have for a drone. So I have a Mavic 2 Pro drone that I could fly out there. This drone is about $2,000 and it's not impervious to water and it certainly won't float. So you can buy the little mechanism that fits on here that'll drop your line and I'm gonna try that anyway but I can only do that on sunny days. So that's kind of out here for the beginning. Plus if you don't happen to have a $2,000 drone well that doesn't help you does it. So the next option that I've got is to build a, well, we call it a spud gun or a potato launcher. That should allow me to, once I've got that here, it's gonna be kind of dramatic, with a button on it. That should allow me to launch my frozen bait out right into the fish fishing area. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are gonna build that. Um, in addition to that, when you're shore fishing, you have to have rod holders. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how to build one of those. And I'm not gonna show you how to set up the rods yet because I haven't watched enough YouTube videos quite yet to know how to do that. So here's what we're starting with. With a couple of precautions. I'm not a professional. I do a lot of dumb things. I don't suggest that you do what I do. Um, it could end up badly, but I will give you some precautions here. So the first thing, there's these pieces all out here. This is PVC. The black pieces though, you wonder, what the heck's up with that? Well, these are what's called DWV PVC. It's not meant for pressure. This is a pressurized vessel when it fires. I'm not as concerned about these two pieces, but here's why I am concerned. So take a look. This is three inch PVC. See, it's solid, solid all the way through. I mean, it's, it's hard as could be. This is a piece of DWV cross section. If you can see that, that is porous. It's full of holes. This would typically be used for sewer pipe, that sort of thing. And in Alaska, it is really hard to get a hold of three inch PVC, as I learned last weekend, as we went to six different stores to find it. Back home, it was much easier. And you're going to need an igniter, which I have, and obviously primer and PVC glue. So 
I've never actually built one of these before and I'm not actually sure if it's going to work exactly. So I'm not going to give you a whole pile of dimensions and stuff because it may not work and I may have to modify it. It's happened before. So, <clears throat> this is what I'm going to use for the barrel. Uh, this is a piece of inch and a half PVC. If you notice here on the end, I sharpened just the outside of it. I did that with an angle grinder so that when you take a potato, like say this was a potato, and you jam it in there, it'll actually cut the potato to be the exact right size. That's my goal with that. So that's that. Um, next, <clears throat> when you're using the glue in the PVC, the plumber's primer, it actually softens up the PVC a little bit and the glue is the glue. But it's important to remember to not let the primer completely dry out, if you can even get it open. And, uh, oh, I can't. Hmm. This is actually a reducer. This goes from three inch out on the outside diameter down to two inch here. The reason I kind of like this one, is you see how it has a taper, it should focus the force, so to speak. So I'm gonna start and I think this is called like a clean out tee. I'm not sure, I'm not a plumber. <clears throat> I gotta remember how I had this figured. Yeah, it goes like that. Okay, so I'm gonna start by putting these together. So I'm gonna use primer and I'm gonna use primer on both pieces. So just get it around in there like so. Cleans it and starts softening it. And on this piece, I'll do the same on the outside. Set that back in there. And then we'll open up the glue. And uh, another caution, I wouldn't necessarily do a whole lot of this inside um, as the fumes are quite strong. And uh, yeah, this probably can't be that good for you and keep it away from flame, obviously. Fumes are strong, and it could be flammable. Probably is, if you read the warnings. They go together, push them all the way together, and sometimes you'll find that they kind of push themselves back out a little bit, put it together, and I give it a little bit of a twist, and hold it for a moment. And that's all good. Okay, so there's a reducer going from three inch down. The next piece that I'm going to install, so this is our clean out T here. This is gonna be, so the chamber is gonna actually consist of all of these pieces together. That is your chamber. So that's gonna hold your propellant, we'll call it. So the next ones I'll go together are these. And again, both pieces. I asked a plumber once, why is some of this purple and why is some of the primers clear? And he told me so that that's so that the home inspector can see if an amateur did it or a professional. Um, professionals don't use purple primer. <clears throat> that's just what I was told. I, you can debate that in the comments if you'd like. So again, I'm gluing both pieces. We'll put it together and we'll give it a turn and we'll kind of hold it there for a moment. The supervisors are here. Now this next piece in combination with this one here will be how we load the chamber. There's technical names for this stuff. I don't necessarily know what it is. I'm so I'm not going to fake it like I do. So again, we prime it completely. It, the easy way, the nice thing I will say about the colored primer is, you know if you missed a spot, right? <clears throat> I guess the pros don't have to worry about that, but that's not me. So, well, like that, see? So we're all primed up. 
things are strong. And I go right to the glue. Pushing down firmly. You can kind of feel it bottom out. And if you look here, you can see how it pushes back out. I don't know why it does that. But it pushes back. So I'm going to push it down. Give it a turn and hold it. And from there, you're going to insert your cap. We're going to load. I kind of designed this a little bit different. And I'm going to have to take a few extra steps with this. So this part here is going to be like a carrying handle. And that will actually hold the firing mechanism as well. Um, so we will start by gluing this, or priming this, sorry. I have to actually make sure that these two are parallel, so I'm just going to momentarily stick this in here and make sure that we are parallel. <clears throat> now we're going to glue in our barrel. We'll do that part next. Prime that, prime the non-sharpened end, barrel. Hey Brooke Trout, if you're out there, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong here, but go ahead and correct me in the comments. And we will glue this up, glue this up, push it in, give it a twist. We're getting pretty close here now. Okay, so another thing that I struggled to find here in Alaska is a proper igniter. I wanted just the standard grill igniter, couldn't find one. All I could find was this, which I believe is for a gas um, water heater. So that's, I shocked myself like five times trying to figure that out. I'm not going to use that. So then I found this style here. And what I did is I took an inch and a half PVC cap, I drilled a hole, I put that in there, but now I have this for the igniter, right? And there's no way it's going to reach all the way from here down to back to here. Because it's important, I believe, just in my head, that your igniter be as close to the back of the chamber as possible. Otherwise, it's literally going to burn back to burn forward and I want it to start in the back and burn forward and pressurize everything out. That's my theory. So in order to do this now, if I glue this on now, I'll never get this on there. So I'm going to drill a small hole in this PVC here, all the way down about here, that will let me run this wire in, hook it up to the igniter, and then I'll install it in here. through. I can hook that to my igniter. Make sure that's all the way seated and then we will prime and glue the cap.
Yeah, the giving it a twist really seems to kind of lock it in place, which is good. So now, we need to mount this in here. <clears throat> and I'll have to drill another hole. That was better. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, she launched right away too. That was awesome. That's kind of cool. I mean, of course, I do my typical overcomplicated version of a potato gun, but I think that was pretty cool. We got a chance. What are you using for propeller? I used some brake clean. It's the first thing I've found that's actually flammable enough to actually launch anything. Hairspray, it didn't work. We tried the Aussie hairspray. We tried the big and sexy. Um, neither of those are really even flammable, but brake clean seems to work. Yeah, I, yeah that was kind of cool. Yeah. That was kind of fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that video. So the last time you saw us, we were assembling the spud gun or the bait launcher as it is in this case and I, I had a thought that some of you would ask me some questions like hey adam what was that sound <laughs> sorry dogs being strange um what if the igniter goes bad how will i ever get that off so i actually glued in a union right here so i can actually unscrew this and then as I put it together, I had a lot of problems because I couldn't get it to spark. So you can see on the inside here, I added a screw and there's my igniter. So it's got a, a point to spark to, but it still wouldn't spark. And I realized this is a one wire. So the igniter is meant to screw into steel and that makes the ground contact. Well, PVC is non-conductive. So I rigged up a ground wire, the white wire here going to the screw, and now it works just fine. And we added an outstanding paint job. I, you shouldn't be able to find this in the back of the truck the way it looks here. Camouflage, right, Phyllis? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah, to fire it, let's just hold it and kip out. So it, do, it does work. And I added this um, mainly because it's got a flat bottom, so I can set it on the ground <clears throat> and it doesn't tip over. In addition to that, getting ready for surf fishing, you're going to need something to hold your rods. You could be going hours before getting a bite. So, so this is a three foot piece of re-rod, a one foot piece of PVC left over from the gun, and <clears throat> notice I left the re-rod high. Um, that's because if the surf is kind of hard and you need to pound it into the ground, you can hit on the rod instead of the PVC, which will shatter. And that is just some fancy duct tape there. So I made six of these. I've got the spud launcher ready to go. I need to, uh, I need to do a few more things. I need to get my rods ready. We bought a couple of 12 foot ugly sticks and some reels and, uh, yeah. The next time we see you, well, it won't be the next time, but pretty soon, we'll be going down to Seward, Alaska, where we are going to try our hand at halibut and gray Pacific cod. So if you're looking forward to seeing that, we're looking forward to seeing you. This is Adam. And Phyllis. From Alaska Cut the Cord. Love you, bye. Nice hat. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> it was in the back of the boat. You have a ramrod of exactly the right length. Plus. Yeah. You're going to work. Hey. We got a 50 50 shot, huh? What direction are you launching? You have your best brake clean. Get it pretty close. Good. 
Ready? <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> How cool is that? Holy cow. That's awesome. I'm... Hey, dogs are gone. Yeah. Where'd the dogs go? Oh, yeah, oh, I just gone. launched a can in there, terrified. It actually had some recoil. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You want to launch one? No. Yeah, I'll let you do it. <laughs> I just said no. Oh. Let's try it one more time. It was big enough to get like three shots out of it. <clears throat> feel like we're getting ready for the Civil War here. I think they ate all the potatoes they could find. Probably. Alright, let me try it. Are you scared? Yeah. Okay, here you are. I got it. Let's get your last moments on camera. <laughs> that was... Wow. That was great. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't have a tight seal. <laughs> Bumps it off the, the grill. Yeah, you made it like 20 yards, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Pretty sure I could cast farther than that. Probably. You gotta have a tight seal. <laughs>